in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on YouTube and various other places as the mighty, 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 mm, and your snub number seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ebin Ra. I would like just to take a few minutes of your precious time. It is always an honor that you would allow me to speak with you. That is such a wonderful feeling. And again, for me, it is always an honor that you would find me worthy of your time. These few minutes I would like to expand speaking on exposing Angel Snub Nub 7. In fact, we would like to just talk about those who are on this forum called YouTube or it could be space, <laughs> space Facebook or MySpace there are a group of people, including myself, we come to YouTube, we come to Facebook, we come to social media to expose somebody. I expose. I expose those who deceive, those who trick. Those who are behind wicked dealings, but they don't want you to know or they don't want you to be reminded of their wicked past. So I expose. And overall, those who expose lies and deceit and treachery, there is nothing wrong with you exposing that which could stop the harm coming towards someone or somebody. In my short and brief history on YouTube, I have been exposed many times. There are those who know the truth about me trying to expose whatever it is. And I welcome those things. A person who has done nothing and is causing no one harm, why should I be worried about being exposed? I have caused no one harm I've done nothing to no one. I'm not worried about your exposure. Actually, what is this exposing? What are you trying to expose? Most of the time, these persons that are trying to expose, they are venting frustration and anger because they dislike somebody's opinion or perhaps they dislike how in a personal interaction somebody they did something this person didn't like so I'm going to expose and tell the truth about you that's not exposing that's a personal problem because there is no harm that you're you're not presenting any harm to the public. What are you exposing? And when they expose, there is no credible evidence. There's no valid evidence. They're, they really don't present anything except 
I don't like this person's opinion or something went wrong in personal interaction. There is no exposure. I welcome being exposed because if I am a liar, if I'm a deceiver, am I, if I'm a trickster, I want you to show the public and expose me for the devil that I am. So those who know the truth about me, those who have valid information and can present this, then you are doing a very good service and I don't dislike you. I applaud. I applaud your efforts to expose me. Now at the same time, you don't believe that somebody who is doing these things is going to sit back and admit it or confess. But most of y'all just get angry and then that's the end. We don't hear from you no more. If somebody is tricking somebody, if somebody's causing somebody harm, then you need to make sure and stay on that case. And if necessary, you call the police, the FBI, you do whatever you need to do to stop this person from causing others harm. Now, at the same time, these persons who love to expose, they want to snitch on somebody because basically that's what you're doing. And really, there's nothing wrong with being a snitch if your intent is good. But if your intent is just to try to cause somebody harm, I'm going to tell a lie, expose to try to ruin my reputation, trying to make me something that I'm not, then that's a whole new ball game. Then those who are trying to expose, you are the real liar. You are the real deceiver. You are the real devil and trickster. So we must watch. We must watch ourselves. We must watch out and be cautious of whom we listen to and and decide whether or not to take them seriously because you have persons like that who are just trying to be angry. And then if you notice, these people that try to expose, you don't know nothing about them. You don't. When we have disagreements among one another, they never say what they done. Oh, so-and-so did this to me. Oh, so-and-so did that to me. They never, they act like they're innocent. Now, I didn't do nothing. He just attacked me. He just did this. He just, or, or she just did that. I, I'm a little, I didn't do nothing. And if you investigate the situation, most times you'll find out it was an even interaction or this person is just a liar. Why should these people be believed? Why should you believe somebody that said, I'm going to tell the truth about Angel Snup Nup 7. I'm going to expose Angel Snup Nup 7. I'm going to expose Louis Farrakhan. I'm going to expose Sarah Sutton I'm exposing Sonetta. Oh, they do all this expose. Who, who are you? Why should we believe them? What are they about? What's their background? We need to question those who expose. What are you about? On YouTube, when we're talking about exposing somebody, what they really mean is that I'm angry at you like a little kid. I'm mad at you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to put something out there. I hope that they take on face value. I'm going to say that again. I hope that they take on face value. They don't question my integrity. They don't question my character. I hope that they just look at me and believe what I say so I can try to ruin, destroy the reputation, the character of somebody else whom I dislike. And this is sad. Because we should expose liars. We should expose tricksters. We should expose those causing harm to others. If you notice these same people, they don't expose the real people. They don't, re they don't expose the people in government. They don't expose their mothers and fathers. 
those who are in positions to cause other people harm, their lives may cause the death of others. They don't spend that time. They come on YouTube trying to find some little guy, somebody that has no influence. I'm going to expose you. Again, I embrace that. Expose your little heart out when it comes to me. There is nothing out here that those who know me don't know already. So what are you exposing about Angel Snub Nub 7? And when you come, you better come strong. Where's your evidence? What supports your allegations? Because you simply dislike me or have some type of problem with, with me, that's not enough. I want to be exposed. I want to sit my black ass down if I'm saying and doing something that is causing harm to others. I don't teach hate. I'm not prejudiced against nobody. I'm going to speak the real truth. That hurts your feelings. But it is not hate. There are things I don't like. But unlike you, I can accept the truth. I can accept my error. I can accept my shortcomings. I can try to work to make myself better. And that's what we should learn to do. Instead of running around here, pointing fingers at little YouTube people. When there are big folks in real life that you should be spending time on. World powers. Local powers in your local governments that is stealing from the people, lying to the people, cheating the people, causing people death, unjust incarceration. You should be shame of yourself. If you want to expose, then you expose those who are really causing harm. I have not done nothing to you or nobody. You should be shamed. You go your way, I go my way. I have to do the work that I feel I must do. And no matter how much you want to hate on me, I'm going to continue to do that. And clearly, with over 60 channels terminated, it has not stopped me. With that said, jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This is your brother, Tali Keeping Raw. This was and is the Rally's Temple on Earth. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the host, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rock. I would like just to speak with my audience, in particular those who believe in God. Even in 2012, the majority of our people those who are the descendants of slaves born in America, the majority of us are Christians. And the majority of us, we believe in God. And although I do not believe in God, I understand and respect your feelings because I come from the same place. And in our journey in life, in our development, mentally, all of us are 
in different places. Just like there are those who are just starting off in preschool, then we have those who have earned all types of degrees in schools of higher learning. So that's how we are in life. Everybody is in different places. I am happy that I came through the doors of the Christian church. I am happy that I came through the doors of the Islamic mosque. I am happy about these experiences because I can relate and I know how you feel. So I'm going to try to talk to you in the language that you know. From my perspective, because I understand God also. How can a person who don't believe in God understands God? Well, it's because I understand the thinking process. And at one time or another, I myself was a believer in God. And that is still in me. Just like you remember your experience of what you learned in kindergarten. And the first grade and the fifth grade. But now you've earned your bachelor's and your master. But you still retain your early knowledge. I still retain the knowledge that I learned from the Christian church and from the from the Muhammad temple of Islam. And what I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, is that when you hear not my not only myself, but when you hear brothers and sisters, when we talk about black liberation, when we talk about black conscience, when we talk about our African self, when we have to, when we have to, because they started all this. What we call white supremacy, white racism, that started our problem. We must talk about white people because that's what caused our problem. In fact, that's why you are a Christian. In fact, that's why you are a Muslim. Because of the interaction with Caucasian or pink people. And these same people that put us in this condition, that caused the condition, they are still doing things that hinder our progress. And the mentality that we have is not your mentality, but it belongs to them. Do you understand? But if you don't, I want to say this. It's not hate speech. Hate speech, that's a waste of time. Hate speech would be doing the same thing to them what they done to us. And that's what makes them paranoid. And that's what makes you paranoid because you learn how to love them. Oh, please, don't talk about the white people. Please don't do that. I would like you much better. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. You believe in God. Do you believe that a God wants you to live the way that you are living? You were brought to this country as an African person and now you don't even, you hate your African self. You don't even want to talk about anything related to black or anything related to African. You don't want nothing to do with that. But that's what, that's how God created you, right? God, if God wanted you white, then why wasn't you born white? You was born black. What's wrong with you? God wants you to love yourself. You can still have your pink and Caucasian friends if that's what you, but why do you have to, de to deny your black self? 
in order to be their friend. They are still Europeans. They have not changed who they are. You change yourself to be like them because you believe the more you are, the more Europeanized you are, the more they will accept you. And why is that? In other words, for some reason in your mind, you think they are better. This reminds me of an abusive relationship. And you would tell the abused person, whether that person is male or female, you don't need that. Stop allowing them to beat you up. Stop allowing them to verbally abuse you, physically abuse you. Get out of that relationship. But here you are. You are ashamed of being an African. You are ashamed of being black. You an abused person, but you hold on to this relationship because just like the abused person, the perpetrator will tell you, I, I changed. Give me a second chance. I changed. I'm not like that no more. That's what Caucasian people tell us all the time. We ain't the same. We're not the same as our fathers. We different. We changed. How long have you been here? Black man and woman in America. How long have you been here? You've been here over 300 years for sure. And you're still complaining. You might feel because you can, you have a little bit more education and you can drive a fancy car and you can even marry Caucasian people and live in happiness. Things have changed, but you're still complaining. You're still talking about we shall overcome after 300 years. You've been singing that song, we shall overcome for how long? And you're still singing it. You are an abused person. And you don't want to get out of this relationship because you fear what you're going to do without them. You don't know what kindness is. That's not what God don't want you to be in this type of relationship. If the Caucasian people treated you as a true equal, treated you with justice, treated you like the man and the woman that we are, that's different. But they are not, and you know it. That's, that's not what God wants for you. So it's not hate speech. When you hear me speak, when you hear others speak, it don't have nothing to do with hate speech. It's about we want you to do better. Get out of this bad relationship. Just like if a woman was married to an abusive man. I'm telling you to get out of that relationship. It's not hate speech. Especially if I don't know your husband. But I know he's doing you wrong. Want you out of that relationship because we want you to do better. It's not hate speech. We want you to do better. And it would be the same if it was Caucasian people. If a Caucasian person was in a bad relationship among bad people, we, we would say the same thing. You need to leave them suckers alone. They ain't treating you right. It's not hate speech. And God wants better. Don't you think why do you think you pray? The slave pray. You pray. But when God begins to answer your, your prayers, you don't want to hear it because you fall in love with your abuser. God wants to take you away from your abuser. That's where your problem is coming from. And God don't want you dependent upon your abuser. God wants to make you independent. God took Moses and his people out of land, out of, out of an oppressive land, to take them to another land so they can be free, so they can live up to their potential and be who they are. You can't be who you are living among an abuser and you believe in order to, to move up in the world, you have to be like your abuser. What God would want you to live like that? So... If you accuse me of hate speech, then you must accuse God of hate speech 
Because God don't want that for no person, regardless of the skin color. Nowhere. So with that said, I want y'all to think about it. It ain't about hate speech. And if these people like you or they love you the, the way they claim they do, then they know what is being said is correct. And they would help you move forward so that you can, so that you can, and we as a people can reach our highest potential. But there are those who don't want to see us at our high potential because they've taught us that we are inferior. And they know it's a lie, and we know it's a lie, and they don't want us to show that it's a lie by hindering our progress. God wants the best for you, and God does love us. God loves you enough to take you out of an abusive relationship, and he's doing that, he or she is doing that every day. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Rallys Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth, the most realist program on YouTube, the most powerful voice on YouTube. I am the mighty, mighty, mighty. Uh, Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Raw. I truly wonder, and I'm very sure that many of y'all want to wander with me. It raises questions, it's mind boggling. And I've come to the conclusion. And I would like for those to disprove what I'm going to say with evidence because from what I see, there are many of us who claim black power. There are many of us who claim black nationalism, African this, black that. But I don't believe it. I don't believe none of what y'all saying. You are a bunch of liars. And you are here for a purpose other than black power, black nationalism, the unification with African people, black conscience. You are here for some other reason. That reason could, could be you're seeking celebrity. You're seeking to enslave black folks in a different kind of way. You're an entertainer. Because if you were serious, if you were real. And like my brother J.T. Riley, one always say, there are only two kinds of people. Mother Uckin fake and mother fucking real. One or the other. I don't see. I don't see no real in y'all. Because in order to be real, we know that we don't have a chance at changing our condition. And there are from forty to seventy million or more black people in this nation. You don't need all of them. There is enough. Brothers and sisters who claim that they have awakened minds, whether you call yourself Muslim, whether you call yourself even Christian, whether you call yourself Hebrew Israelite or Moor or Commission, whatever you call yourself, there's enough resources, there's enough bodies in that. If they were united, you could, we could change the condition of our people almost overnight through example. But that cannot be done until these 
forces unite with one another. But since y'all hate black people, that's right, the nation of Islam, y'all hate people. You hate black folks. The Black Panther Party, y'all hate black folks. The Black Power Cartel, y'all hate black folks. The House of Consciousness, y'all hate black folks. Black supremacy, King Noah, black supremacy, y'all hate black folks. And I'm not going to name all of you, but it's enough. You hate black people. Why do you hate black folks? Brother, what you mean? Wait, wait a minute, how come? Wait a minute, where you getting all this from? The most important people I thought in this relationship, in this struggle, is what is in the best interest of our people. Our people come from all walks of life. They are skinny, they are tall, they are fat. They are, they are dark as the night or look almost white. Some of our people are homosexual. Some of our people are married to the oppressors, children. But they want to help our community. They want to help us as a people. But they are denied that because I'm married to a Caucasian person or, or some other person person outside of our so-called race, but I love us enough, I want to help us as a people to rise up out of this condition. You don't like me, you hate me because I'm a homosexual. So you don't want me involved in the struggle. There are all kinds of reasons. But we know that this condition cannot change until the powers that know better. Because see, our people, the majority of our people are deaf, dumb, and blind. They don't know. So they need a shepherd. And the only shepherd they have right now are those who put them in the condition that they are in. But you who are shepherds, you refuse to bring yourselves together for what is in the best interest of our people because you hate them brother why are you saying I I don't we don't hate them we try to how you if you can't unite with your brothers and sisters in order to get this movement going in the direction and get it give it the strength that it needs then you hate our people you looking out for yourself you out, you out here doing something for yourself. It's a life and death situation. If I love my family, I love my wife and I love my children. And as a male, I claim to be this strong figure. Then if we are trying to survive and resources are low, then I sacrifice my meal so my wife and children can eat. You must be able to compromise. I understand that you believe in what you believe in. But is that more important than our people? Some of you want everybody to be like you. I don't want to be a Muslim. I don't want to be a Hebrew Israelite. I don't want to be some of these things. You can't expect our people to be a clone like you want to be a clone of somebody or something. That's not why you should be here. Your purpose is supposed to awaken the minds of those who are lost. Not make a clone of you. And if, if that's your mission, then I understand why so-called black unity is impossible. Because you're trying to make somebody, want somebody to be like you. And what are you? You live here in the United Snakes of America. And all these Caucasian people from different places come together. But they are different. But they are American. And although they don't agree with one another, they are different 
This one believes in this God. This one believes in that God. This one don't believe in God at all. And so forth and so forth. You see these American Caucasian people come together as one unit. I don't know how long it's going to last because these, <laughs> these Caucasian people are really upset about the re-election of Barack Obama. They, they tripping. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it has lasted. They did have a civil war when they got upset with one another. But they know how to come together even though they are different in order to create this nation which has become the most powerful nation in the history of what we call the human being. Now, Okay, I would like to ask you, what have your brother, what have your sister, what have I done that you hate me so much that you can't work with me, you can't unite with me, you can't compromise some of your principles because I have no problem with helping nobody. in order so that we can be an example of what can be done if we come together as a unit. And you are so stupid that you don't understand that coming together makes you more stronger because now you got back up when you was by yourself. So it's not you by yourself. You can go to this brother or this sister because we're all struggling and fighting for the same common purpose and goal. And you can still continue to do your own personal thing. But see, your own personal thing is not the upliftment of our people. That's a common goal and purpose of many of us. So why can't we do that? Then you can work these other things out after you accomplish the number one priority, the number one mission of bringing our people together and changing this condition that we've been placed in by vicious demons. Because they're not going to do anything. And you should be shaming yourself. You have the knowledge. You have. We have the resources. We can change this overnight if we come together. But you hate your own black self so much. Yes, you do. Y'all hate black folks. You hate your own black self because I don't think that you really believe you can get this job done. I don't think that you believe in yourself. Well, this person is like this. This person is like that. In religious scriptures, it says, come as you are. Our people are drunkards. Our people are crackheads. Our people are in all kinds of different conditions. The scriptures say, come as you are. Let them come. If they smart enough, sober enough to understand this movement, then they can't be that messed up in the mind. Whatever they, wherever they are in life. Give our people a chance. Give yourself a chance. Let us come together and change this condition. Or stop being a hypocrite. Get out, out of our people's face. Maybe that's the reason why they don't embrace you because they know y'all fake. There's only two people in this world, real and mother -ucking fake. Maybe our people recognize that you are fake. If not, prove me wrong. I doubt if you can. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors. Hmm. Peace forever and always. And welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the host of this particular program. Known here on YouTube and around the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. And your snub number seven. I am your brother. And hopefully your friend. Talik. Even Ra. 
Okay. Let us attempt to make very clear um, this particular topic. What it really is, not what you believe or think it is, I'm going to tell you exactly what's happening. <laughs> you understand? There are those who believe that Caucasian racism, which is the only racism, how is it possible that racism pass from generation to generation because of course things have changed things are different so we seek to try to find an explanation because how could such a thing continue to pass down from generation to generation when black folks we are now marrying the children of the slave masters we are now millionaires in the slave masters world we drive fancy cars we smoke dope we drink all the liquor we want wow we got it going on we almost like our massa except this racism still won't let us be equal. Why is that, sir? First of all, the concept of race was designed and it was created solely and alone by the scholars and the scientists of European American people. No dark people, no African, no Chinese, no Native American, <coughs> excuse me, no dark person was involved with the concept of race. This was done by Caucasian or pink people by themselves. And within the race, using Darwin theory as a base, they made them the superior species. They made themselves the supreme race. And they use this scientific racism, this scientific prejudice, along with religious prejudice. Because out of their Christian religion, dark people across the planet were cursed. They were considered savages and the cursed by God. And God gave them the permission to force these dark people to serve them. So this combined with the false science and this lie from religious teachings, they that justified the European to go out in the world and conquer, lie, terrorize, and take the lands of dark people. And then when they had dark people living among them and when they took over the known world, they had to have a way to control all the dark people they now dominate. So systems had to be created in order the, for the savage to know his place. So they created education. Because they took the black and they took the Native American. They took all those dark people of whom they conquered and they began to teach the dark people their religion, their way of doing things. They made the African European. They made the Native American people European. Everybody, all the dark people of whom they conquered, they made them versions of the European. And they had to hinder your development 
hinder your potential. So these these systems of education and politics, the media, government, law, all these things are, they had to design systems to keep you in check, whether you had chains on you or not. Free slaves were still a nigger, just like the slaves that had chains on their wrists. So this is where racism is. Racism is systems designed based on race, racial supremacy, and a racist are those who belong to the superior race that practice that which, which their prejudice born from this racist system they can act on that prejudice and that bias and that hatred. And usually the hatred and the bias and and the and all these things come from up out of being taught that I am superior. So I'm going to hate those who are inferior. I'm going to view those who are inferior. I'm going to be prejudiced to it because they're not good as I am. And we must understand that this became a way of life. It is true that a Caucasian person can sit down with their children and teach hate the Negro, hate the Mexican, hate this dark person. Hey, yes, that's true. And if they belong to the Ku Klux Klan or they belong to the Nazi party or whatever, yes, they sit and teach their children racial supremacy. But where did they get it from? They got it from a way of life in America and around the world designed by Caucasian people this was international this around the, the world and when they claim to free the black they free the African when they claim to make things better for those of whom they conquered <clears throat> these dark people the systems designed to keep you under control was not removed. So you can free me physically, but the law and the educational system, systems of media, all these things are not changed. So technically, yes, you can, an individual can teach their child, hate the Negroes, hate the whoever, but they were born. This is a way of life. Just like you as a black man and woman, we still have a slave mentality because slavery is all we know. We've never been in control. We've never ran nothing. We've always been under the control of Caucasian people who control us by racism. And just because you married to a Caucasian person, or just because you drive a fine car, you still live in a racist system, and you still are in your in a control position that of a slave. Everything you are, everything that you do benefits your master. The money in your pocket, when you sing and dance, whatever you do in this country, because the systems are created. You are no you you do not make the laws. There is not one law that Caucasian people obey, that black folks or Africans or Mexicans, no dark people made. There is there is no law that they are bound to. They are not educated by us. They are not controlled by us. That's why black folks, that's there is no system, there are no systems by dark people that oppress and hinder the progress of Caucasian people, thus dark people cannot be racist. Racism, ism, that's a system. It's a system of racial su supremacy to keep another person in check, to keep one person on top. And what is sad, since, since most 
Caucasian and black folks, we are born into this condition. We have no idea what has happened to us because it's a way of life. This has been a way of life in America ever since it was founded. And that way of life continues to exist to this day because those systems designed by races are still in place. That's why everybody are still in place. That's why Caucasian people are still on the top within all these systems and dark people are still on the bottom because that's how, that's the system. The system don't change. The black people are still taught Caucasian history, but you don't see them learning African or black history. That's pushed to the side. It's not wanted. Matter of fact, they are attempting and want to erase slavery out of American history, period. Racism is systems. And since young Caucasian people, they might not even, they're not even, some of them are not even trying to be racist, but they do understand that having light skin in this country, they know it's an advantage. They know it. They know they're not stupid. But of course, they don't want to get you so angry and upset being an inferior. Things gonna get better. Things gonna uh, whatever. Don't treat me like I'm stupid. We know what's happening in this country. It's out there right here in our face. So racism is taught but we was born into Caucasian pink supremacy. It ain't something that you even have to teach. It's a way of life. Jot down your comment. Let's talk about it. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. In the name of my ancestor. Hmm. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm your host, known here on YouTube, Facebook, Daily Motion, Vimeo, and many other places, MySpace. On the internet, I am known as the mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to send this particular message to all of us who claim. See, you can claim anything that you want. What you really are is a different, a whole different ball game. We can claim to be Christian, but our actions do not show that we are Christian. We can claim to be Muslim, but our actions don't show that we are really a Muslim. We can claim to be a police officer, but we've never been to the police academy, but you can claim anything that you want. So I want to speak to all of us that make such a claim because see, in this reality, sooner or later, somebody is going to test you. Sooner or later, we're going to find out who is who. We're going to find out exactly who and what you are. So you can talk big. You can holler hotel. You can scream black power. You can be as black as these shades. But sooner or later, we are going to find out who you are because in order to be black and to establish your blackness, you're going to have to fight. 
because there are those who are against you coming into your own. There are those who will soon get sick and tired of you trying to tell their slave what to do. They are going to reach into this basket and they need to get rid of the bad apples. And anybody that is teaching pro-black this, pro-black that, African this, African that, in this basket, you are a rotten apple and those who are in power are going to get sick of you and they're going to need to take the right steps in order to get rid of you. So you can say, black power, I'm a black nationalist, I'm a black this. We're going to find out because the powers that be pretty soon and don't think they are not acting right now, making their plans how to get rid and silence your voice, get rid of you mentally and physically. This is verified by history for those of you who are history buffs. I said claim. See, some of y'all, you can claim to be black power and black nationalists. I'm so pro-black, this and that. You never had to prove yourself. Anybody can come on YouTube, sit behind a computer, most of y'all are faceless, and run your damn mouth. Anybody can do that. Including the oppressor. Including the racist pink people. You don't know who they are. They can come on YouTube pretending to be some black man, black power family, black this and black that, just to see who is who. Many of you, you really don't understand what this struggle is about. It's a struggle. It's a fight for liberation. Somebody's trying to be free. Somebody don't want you free. And if they don't want you free, you think they're just going to make it easy for you? Many of you, you never live without a meal. Y'all eat three meals a day. You have no idea what it is to go hungry. You have plenty of water. You have plenty of food. You have air conditioning. You've never been to jail. Some of y'all never had a speeding ticket. You don't have no idea of how it feels to be incarcerated. Some of you never had your ass whooped. No, some of you never been punched in the face. Leg broke. Lip busted. You don't know how it feels, how pain feels, physical pain. If you are going to be involved in black struggle, in black liberation, you, ha you have no idea of how it feels to believe that somebody is tapping your phone. That's what they did to Dr. King. That's what they did to Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm and the Black Panther Party. Their phones was tapped. They was followed everywhere. That's part of black power. That's part of black nationalism. You have a vicious enemy that don't like you. At the same time, they got to get rid of you smooth because they don't want to be viewed as the bad guy. You and I, we must be the bad guy. And some of y'all, many of you, the majority of you are cowards. You hide behind pictures, running your damn mouth because you really ain't ready for it. You talk a lot of crap. And you hide your face behind a computer screen. The FBI, the CIA, this government knows everybody that's talking this crap. Well, it's not crap. It's liberation talk. They know who you are. Now, maybe your boss at your job don't know who you are. And your Caucasian or pink neighbors don't know who you are. But the government believe this. They know who you are. And that's the one that you got to worry about. Your neighbors, your Caucasian neighbors next door, 
They are just trying to go to work and make a living just like you are every day. But when it comes down to it, they're going to support their government. And if their government view black liberation, black nationalism, black power as domestic terrorism, then they will snitch on you and they hope that you burn in hell and go to jail forever. You don't understand how serious this whole thing is. Because you claim, but you are really not of black power. You're not really of black liberation or, or nationalism. You're just somebody that hide your face on YouTube talking your smack and you dare come to me because I'm real. I already know that the powers can be or that be. I already know they can find out who I am. So what's the sense of hiding behind a picture on YouTube, hiding behind a picture on Facebook? They know who you are. Y'all sissy. And to bring this video to conclusion, I want to give you a slight example of what's going to happen to us. Any of you who talk all this black liberation nationalism stuff, This happened to me a few years ago, but I'm very sure it is it applies to today. I was speaking with the Navy SEAL. Y'all know the Navy SEALs, that's the military. The Navy SEALs is an elite form of the military. And this person claimed to be a black man and this black man told me I'm sick of this of y'all black nationalism black power all that bull crap I'm sick of it and of course I would call him a sambo a dark European or a Uncle Tom however y'all want to call it and he said you can call me whatever you want but I'm gonna tell you this I'm a Navy SEAL. I've been trained to kill. And I'm not trying to scare nobody, but this is your reality struggling to get free and liberate your people. This Navy SEAL Sambo told me when, his, when he gets the order, he's going to blow my brains out. He's going to blow your brains out. All of you talking this black nationalism, black power, when the orders are given undercover or outright, when they are, are given the order to start killing you, killing people who think like this, act like this wholesale, he's going to be on the front line. Good riddance to bad rubbish. This is a black man. So, Many of you do not want allies. You don't want to make friends with other national, uh, nationalities and other people around the earth. But you have black folks that are on the side of your enemies willing to blow your brains out. That's all right. You can accept that. Many of these Negroes, these dark Europeans, they're not going to side with you. They're going to watch you get blown away. They're going to watch you go to jail. They're going to watch you be harassed and terrorized. They're not going to say anything. You're not strong enough. And you're not strong enough because you can't. You have not made allies with other people. You have not even made friends with your own in this nation. Because you want to try to force them to be like you. And it's not, it's not about trying to force black folks to be like you. It's about trying to free ourselves. All black folks, no matter where you find them in life. So you're going to find out very quickly that your strategy is a losing strategy when they take all of y'all to jail or all of y'all to the morgue. Because this Navy SEAL is waiting in the background to murder you. And are you ready for him when he comes for you? 
What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Y'all talk good. Talk a good game on YouTube. Hide in your face. What you gonna do when that reality comes knocking on your door? With a present from Uncle Sam. A bullet with your name on it. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This your brother Tali. Keep it raw. This was and is. The Rowley's Temple on Earth. Hmm. Peace, Father, and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Now, I would like to draw some comparisons, and within those comparisons, it will raise questions, and I want you to answer those questions for yourself. I was told, and I have been told, that the black man and woman of America, the descendants of slaves born in America, we come from a people who are gods and goddesses. The late brother known as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught that every time you see a black man, you see God. At the same time, <laughs> at the same time, if that God is a hypocrite, then you wait for him to go to the Audubon ballroom and you shoot him down being an unarmed man in front of his wife and children. <laughs> That was on my mind. I, I had to bring that up. Because you say, this is not my teaching. You said that every time you see a black man, you see God. But look how we treat God. We shoot them down because we don't like what they say, what they do. And we kill each other. Wow. That's, we call the goddess a hole and a bitch. <laughs> That's another subject. I don't want my time to run out because I, I, I have another point I want to make. But we really, do we really, do we think about what we say? Do we think about what we do? Now, we are gods and goddesses, and we are these great warriors. We are the strongest and the best because of melanin. Some of y'all into this melanin thing. Oh, we got all this melanin. And that's true. Having a certain amount of melanin in your skin gives you an advantage. It, it, gives, it gives you a certain amount of power. All these things are true. We are great because we have melanin. We are gods and goddesses and great warriors. Now, I want to tell y'all about a squirrel. A squirrel. Y'all know what a squirrel is, don't you? Now, the racist Caucasian people and perhaps many other folks during the time of so-called human existence, they have domesticated animals. You have the pig, domesticated animal. The cow is a domesticated animal. Chickens, the dog and cats. They are domesticated animals. I was just reading an article about squirrels. And in this article, because don't think that somebody has not tried to make a pet out of a squirrel. 
But it says in this article that a squirrel refuses to be a pet. That's why you don't see squirrels in pet stores. You might catch a few now and then, but squirrels refuse to be enslaved. I'll say that again. A squirrel refuses to be enslaved. So if the squirrel was a human being, if the squirrel was black living in Africa, when the Caucasian people came to put it on a boat and change whatever that beast decided to do, that squirrel said, hell no, I ain't doing it. So you tell me, if a squirrel refuses to be a slave, to be domesticated, how did a god, how did a goddess, how can a warrior, how can you so strong and so mighty with this melanated skin, how did you get on a boat, be put in chains, and then you went to America to be somebody's slave for over 300 years? Tell me. You telling me that a squirrel has more veracity, that a squirrel has more fight than you do, and you are God and a goddess and a great warrior? Because a squirrel refuses to be domesticated, a squirrel refuses to be enslaved, and the black man and woman, we who are the descendants of slaves born in America, you have become domesticated, no doubt. In the zoo, many of those animals, some of them can't be domesticated, but they breed. But then you have a minority, you have a small group of animals that's in the zoo. And you will hear zookeepers all the time say, we can't get these animals to breed. Because these animals, they shut down their systems of sex. Because they know this is not their home. This is not their environment. This is a foreign place. I ain't supposed to be here. So why should I have sex? to have babies so they would be enslaved like me. This is, these are animals. These are animals that refuse to reproduce in incarceration. Uh, man, whoo. But here you are, the warrior, the gods and goddesses. They brought you here on ship. Laying in your own urine and feces. Next thing y'all know, y'all can't stop from screwing. And breeding. Breeding for the benefit of who? Breeding for the benefit of your massa. Just like you do today. You can holler black power, black nationalism, and all that black stuff all that you want to. Your babies end up in the same jail that you are in and they benefit your massa. And y'all love talking about sex. You so black power, y'all sex fiends. Your mind is sexualized. But see, that's how it is when you become incarcerated. That's how it is when you become enslaved because you don't have nothing else better to do. Your life is miserable. You know your life is pathetic. You know your life is miserable. Your only joy is trying to find some kind of pleasure. So if you can't get drunk, if you can't get any drugs, then you seek the pleasure in your flesh because you're a slave. Because the rest of your life is dedicated and you benefit your massa. But a squirrel said, I ain't doing it. I ain't having it. So you can kill me or do what you please. When you open up that cage, I'm escaping. I'm getting out of here. There were many brothers and sisters, black men and women, who decided to jump to the sharks, who decided to try to fight, and they was killed. But the majority of, of us who are living today, we are the children of those who got scared of the whip, who were scared to die. The ones that said, yes, sir, master. How's it doing, master? What you want, master? 
Then when the Masa let them off the job, when they went back to their log cabin, they ate and they screwed. Cause that's all they that's all they have left. That's the only pleasure that's in their life is in their physical body trying to find trying to find an orgasm. And that's what I hear all over YouTube within the black so-called black conscious community. They talking about the pleasure of their physical flesh. Cause you are Negro slave. If you was really fighting for your freedom, if you was really fighting for your liberation, you could find joy in this fight. Find joy in upsetting the cage. But you're not doing nothing except talking crap on YouTube, talking stuff on YouTube. You're not real. And since you're not real, you can't feel the joy of fighting for black liberation. You don't know what it is to be a true black revolutionary. You never hear you never hear of any true black revolutionary talking about some sex garbage. I ain't got time for that. How can I enjoy sex when I got an oppressor on my back? I gotta pay these bills. Every time I reach in my pocket, I got this sucker's face I gotta look at every day. How can I have real joy? I want my own. You bums don't want your own. You want your own TV show. Look at me, I'm on YouTube. Look at me, I'm, a, I'm on CNN. That's what you want. You really don't want black liberation. You don't want to liberate your people. You just want to talk and screw because you're a slave. And when you look at all these domesticated animals, look how they breed. Look at them. Look at chickens. Lay eggs every day. Dogs. Ten puppies in a litter just breeding. Breeding for the benefit of who? Benefit of their slave master. All their babies, nothing that they do benefits them. Everything that you do benefits your masa. But yet, you are God. You are goddess and you a great warrior. Ain't won no fight. You a great warrior. What 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 battles have you won? You ain't you ain't first of all, you ain't even started no fight. Where are your injuries at? You ain't done nothing. So don't come to me, y'all fake ass black revolutionary talking all that black discipline. And ain't nobody doing a damn thing except running your mouth. A squirrel has more heart. Then you do. Enter the dragon. <laughs> Enter the squirrel. A squirrel is more of a god and a goddess than your Negro ass is and ever will be. If not, prove me wrong, but you can't. Hell to the squirrel. <laughs> Thank you for listening. John, do you got <laughs> This is your brother, Tali. Give me a run. This was it is. The reality is temple on earth. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program known here on YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, Daily Motion, and perhaps many other places as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rahm. Now, before I begin, I wish to make a disclaimer because I only deal or this ministry I attempt to only deal with common sense reason logic and facts however when we speak of what many call history the first thing you must question 
is the source of that history because history is always viewed from the manner of which the victor perceives history not the way the loser perceives history for an example I guarantee you that if you had our slave ancestors write history it would be much different than what we learn and what we are taught by the slave master but since the slave was the loser the slave did not leave behind could not read and write did not even draw could not leave any type of of history behind then we believe that history is the way that the slave master perceived it or saw it the problem with believing the slave master is that they are known to be a liar and a deceiver so we cannot trust the history of the slave master and his children and this has nothing to do with hate this has something to do with being cautious what I am about to present has nothing to do with hate It's trying to give us a history so that we can try to determine or find an answer so that we may solve a serious problem that we're facing right now that had its origins way before we came into existence the honorable Elijah Muhammad when I was a member of the nation of Islam under brother minister Louis Farrakhan I was taught that the white man is the devil and being a new Muslim learning all these wicked things that was done to my people yes I admit I felt a lot of hate I did no doubt about that but the reason of why the honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us the history of the Caucasian people was not for us to hate and when somebody do your mama or your father or your sisters and brothers or relatives wrong of course you're gonna hate to see them being done like that but he gives us the history of Caucasian people so that we can understand them so we know what we're dealing with just like if you are hunting a bear if you're hunting a lion or a crocodile those who can do that they understand the nature of what they are hunting they understand the lifestyle of a bear the lifestyle of a crocodile the lifestyle of the creature they are trying to hunt so the honorable Elijah Muhammad gives us the history of the Caucasian people so that we can learn how to deal with this particular person in fact Caucasian people pink people need to try to understand because see all of us are always given these weak versions of history trying to make ourselves look good and the so-called black national black power black whatever you want to call yourself they you have historians that take certain history and we always try to glamorize it enough to make ourselves look good we so great doing this we so great doing that it's no more than Caucasian or pink supremacy it's the same thing one day I hope that after we destroy pink or Caucasian supremacy when we don't give a care about skin color that our scientists and our scholars can dig and examine 
the history and try to find what the real truth about things are, whether that makes Caucasian people look bad, whether it makes black folks look bad or good. However, I want to see history for what it really was, bad or good. But right now, history has been manipulated even before white supremacy or Caucasian supremacy. The victors, these who win the war, these who are the conquerors, always write the history so it favors them. So that's a problem in itself. That's why we need to start all over from scratch and create a brand new, just like the scriptures say, allow the former things to pass away so that something new can come into existence. Because there's too much falsehood, too much deception in what we call human history. But I want to say, this is not hate speech. This is trying to understand the mentality of a person, their psychology. And Caucasian people and, or pink people need to understand this. You came from a place, and that's not your real origin, but we're going to start in Europe. And you were a cave person. This you, you admit and confess yourself. And when Caucasian people were living in the hillsides of caves of Europe, it was a very savage state. You ate your food raw. You wore animal fur on your body. You did not know how to bury your dead. You copied other animals in the field. You made it with the dog. The dog right now is your best friend. Even in 2012, you like raw food. You still love to wear animal fur. You had to fight savage beasts. You didn't know how to take a bath. You were in bad, bad shape. You don't want to talk about that because you great now. You don't want nobody to remind you of that, but you know about it. But and you don't want to tell your people about it. They need to know about it. Because we must have humility. Everybody always starts from somewhere. And even before some of y'all black folks start talking all this stuff, everybody had to start from somewhere. We might not know where we where our origins come from, but you have to crawl before you can walk. That's our reality. Nobody is born cooking food. Nobody is born launching rockets to the, to the moon. Ain't none of that happening. You must evolve to that point. So let us stop trying to, everybody trying to be Mr. and Mrs. Supreme. Everything starts from somewhere. Even if there are aliens in the universe, they started from somewhere. So, the Caucasian people are living in the caves. And as they begin to march out of the caves, they found interaction with Africans. Dark people. Yes, you did. And those Africans, those people, saw, what, saw that you looked human and you was pathetic. And they began to help you and teach you and learn things. You still was a human being at heart. So when you were were beginning to learn these things, you caught on real quick. And you caught on so fast, next thing you know, you began to create your own towns and villages based upon what you learned from those Africans. And you began to adopt music, and you began to adopt the sciences and the ways of already existing civilized uh, persons. And you also took on their negative traits and those in power became corrupt and began to oppress other Caucasian people thus you have the word slave which comes from when the the Slavics the Slavs or slave when white people were enslaving each other and since you came from a harsh environment that fighting savage beast living in the cold, uncomfortable type situation 
even though you were becoming more civilized, that savage, that beast type manner, still inside of you. So when you began to understand and learn and put value on material things in your in your world, there was nothing of real great value. But as you went out, you saw the Africans and their gold and their silver and how they live, and you wanted it. Then you noticed everywhere you went, there were dark people, and you got sick and tired of it. So those who were in power began to think of a plan how to put the Caucasian people on top. You could not do it by numbers, so you had to come up with a... See, this shows, this shows us the incredible mentality of the human brain. The rest is history, and this is just a little bit of it. I'll make a video where I can really talk about the history of Caucasian people and what they went through and their rise to the top. But we have to understand, and Caucasian people have to understand what has happened and why you still think and behave not too much different than the ways you did when you was in, a, in the caves, except now you learn how to wear a tie and put on perfume. Let's think about it. Drop down your comments. There's more to come. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tali Gimara. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors. Hmm. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I'm the host, known here as the mighty, mighty, mighty uh, Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. <laughs> it is it is very sad. But I have never been surrounded or in the presence in all my almost half of a century of living. The so called black man of America. These New black men that I interact with and I am surrounded by, I've never heard a group of black men who are a bunch of wimps. These are the most wimpiest, the most cowardly, the most sissified, the most tacky group of black men I've ever known. I never, as a child, I never heard such things. As a teenager, I never heard such things. But now, in 2012, these so-called black men, they sound so pathetic. They sound so pitiful. And they were weak when I was a child. And now the black man has become even weaker in 2012. You hear these poor, pathetic persons, and most of them come on YouTube and they hide their face. And I understand why you hide your face, because you are ashamed of yourself. I can show my face because I am not ashamed of myself. No matter what I am, I am proud of that, and I will show you that. And I fear no man, no God, no nothing. Period. You don't like who and what I am? To hell with you. But y'all, supposed to be men, you whippified, sissified. I've never been around such cowardly, pathetic trolls. Because that's what they are, a bunch of trolls crying on YouTube. Crying about what? Crying about black women. Who cares? The black women stopping them from being successful. The black women should support them to do this and that. You are a man. You don't need nobody to help you do a damn thing. Just do it. They tell me that the black woman 
is the greatest helper to the racist Caucasian or pink male. If it wasn't for the black woman helping the racist people, they could do better. Cause we need we need your help. You ain't doing nothing to get that need that is the need of assistance that needs somebody's help. What are you doing? What school are you building? What land are you buying? What are you doing, Negro? You ain't doing nothing. Then you want to try to talk about black women is the greatest helper of the racist Caucasian people. What are you? When you reach in your pocket, whose money are you spending? When you pull that dollar bill out, whose face is on it? The racist Caucasian people faces on it. Who gives that dollar bill value? You don't. Only thing you do is spend it. Whose language do you speak, Negro? The car you driving, who built that car? Who give you your job? Who is the Negro out on the streets killing other black men in the street? Living off of women. Selling drugs to our people. Don't pay and take care of your babies. You are drunk and a pedophile. Woman bashers, woman beaters. And that, and you doing all these different things, but the black woman is the greatest helper to the racist Caucasian pink people. Get get out of here with the, you. Woo, y'all. Oh, man. These people are so tacky to me. Everything that you are about, everything that you do, it comes from pink people. So the only thing black women have done within recent times is sidestep you and go straight and directly to the pink people themselves and they get what they want. But in your mind, you're delusional because you was told as long as you have a job, get your little education and then whatever, these black women are supposed to flock to you. Women, whether they are black women or Caucasian women, Chinese, they don't flock to weak ass people. Y'all weak. What do you have to offer? There's nothing that you can give this black woman that she can't get herself. And you blame black women for your problems. Blame women for the fact that you are nothing. Trifling and a nobody. Whose fault is that? That's our fault as men. That's not their fault. You're the one that claim to be the provider. You are the one that claim to be the protector. You ain't providing a damn thing and you damn sure ain't protecting nobody. Anybody at any time can come into the into the so-called so-called black community. It's so-called black community because there is no commune among those who live there. There is no unification among those who live there. There is no sense of community among those. So anybody, any male, anybody from anywhere can come into the black community and do whatever they want to black women and children and you too. And it's all the black women fault. But you the provider and you the protector. You ain't protecting a damn thing. You want the honor. You want the respect. But you ain't earned it. The only thing you have a, is a penis. And I question whether you have that or not. Oh, the black woman don't want me. First of all, as a male, just because you have a job, just because you looking good and looking sharp, that don't mean women supposed to be running after you. In nature, it's the male that always chase the woman. And since we know that she's attracted to this racist beast, then we're going to have to go all out of our way to try to get her back. Y'all don't know how to romance nobody. You don't know how to be suave. You don't have no swag. You don't know how to romance that woman and chase her. She's supposed to chase you because you got it going on and you don't. And that's why the so-called thug Negroes they know how to romance. They know how to say beautiful things. They know how to get that woman. They know how to be the chaser. 
because they know once they get her, she's got. You just want to sit back and complain. You're supposed to sit back in your house, and as long as you got a job and education and a car, you think they're supposed to just, oh, wow, he's great. Let's, I want him. That ain't how it works. Especially when you are in competition with other men, and the greatest competition is against that racist Caucasian pink man and the world that he's built because she thrives and she survives of what that pink man has given her. And in her mind, she's Europeanized just like you are. You, you're, you are Europeanized and a slave just like she is. And a slave woman always want to try to get closer to Massa because she feels that makes her life better. Why should she romance another slave that can't do nothing for her? So if you romance her and you chase that woman and that don't work, she don't want you, so the hell what? Then you, why don't you concentrate on what you should be doing anyway is building a nation for yourself. Why are you in America helping the Caucasian man put value on his dollar? Why you are helping another man build his world? That make you a bitch. That make you a gal. That make you, and that's why most of you are the way you are because you have no masculinity. That's why you a whimper. That's why you cry. Because you have not reached out. You don't know how to embrace your masculine side. You think because you holler and you scream or maybe you can fight a little bit, have a little money in your pocket, you think that makes you a man. But it don't. What makes you a man is the ability to create and become independent and do your own thing just like all the men around the earth. The Chinese are doing that thing. The Indians are doing that thing. The Native American people around the earth that do it. These men are trying to do their thing. Everybody, all the males are trying to do their thing so they can attract and have their women except you. So since you can't protect and can't build nothing, you want a woman, but you don't have no damn house to put her in. You don't have no school for her children to go to. So that so those children can learn what you want them to learn. So those boys can grow up to be what you want them to be. Be a man. Build something. Stop being a whip. Looking for somebody to blame because you pathetic. Become a nation builder. And when you become a nation builder, you will create money that you put value on. So that you can pull out of your pocket a dollar bill with your face on it and compare it to the face of the racist Caucasian man and you can look at that man and say, look, my dollar has more value than yours. And that is possible if you try. But the only thing on your mind, I want a woman so you can screw. Y'all sexify. Instead of having sex with the universe, having sex with yourself in order to encourage yourself to get that orgasm, make you feel good about nation building. Do you understand? If you, if you felt like with towards towards nation building, like you do towards your damn orgasm, you be right there. You be all. You be on point. I wouldn't have nothing to say. I wouldn't have nothing to say because I could look at what your hands have built. I see your school. I see your farmland. I see your nation. I will see your civilization coming up. But right now, the only thing we see is a bunch of wimps, and the women see that too. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them for not wanting us. We need to get our act together. Stand up and be a man. Thank you for listening. Let's talk about it. I know you're angry, but who gives a damn? You're a wimp. <laughs> this wasn't his. The reality is still pulling her. Wimps.